Well, good morning. Welcome to Grove's First Baptist Church. I invite you to open your Bibles with me to Psalm 66 for our call to worship. Psalm 66. And as you are turning there, I want to make note of just a few things from your bulletin. Um, But before we get to the bulletin, um, I do want to just address, I am wearing a pink shirt along with 15 of our students and a couple of our sponsors. Uh, We had a United Youth Retreat at GLBA this weekend uh, across the association. I think we had 10 churches represented there, and we had 150 people there. Uh, So it was a good retreat. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Uh, I love the band. The band was uh, some of my good friends, and then the speaker was a man named Garrett Hankins from FBC Newcastle. I think the students had a good time, and so I'm thankful uh, that we're able to do stuff like this. And I'm thankful for the church to be able to support our student ministry and, and to have such a fantastic cabin and a campground. So church, just from the student ministry, thank you. Uh, for giving and for supporting us and and for the way that you want to see young people grow in the Lord. If you look to your bulletin, I want to address several different activities and events going on in our church, uh, beginning with what is happening today following the morning service. Right after the morning service, we are having a children's ministry picnic right out here on the back lawn. And so if you would like to attend that, if you've got kids or grandkids, or if you don't have either of those, you just want to come eat sandwiches and play wiffle ball, you're welcome as well. Right after this service, we'll go out these doors and to the left, we'll have some food, just sandwiches, picnic style food set up. You can make your sandwich and then just head right out the back door. We'll have some tables and chairs set up. and We'll play wiffle ball, we'll play kickball, just have a good time this afternoon for a few hours. Also coming up this Saturday is the Outside of Ordinary Women's Conference. Um, registration is required beforehand, and so if you are, would like to attend that and you've not registered yet, Please do so. You can look at the website right here in the bulletin. If you need help registering for that, please find Terry or Thomas or myself. Uh, We can get you registered for that so you can attend. Also coming up next Sunday, we have the quarterly business meeting right after morning service. So we invite our members um, to come over to the NPR to have a time of fellowship, a time of lunch, and then time to do some business in the life of our church. And it's going to be a very important meeting. So I hope that you can attend that one. Finally, from your bulletin, um, we have coming up on October 31st, on that Sunday, our Family Fall Fest from 3 to 6. And so our plan for that is to, to again, merge our block party with the Fall Festival that we have every year. And the hopes of doing on that day is that people will be out and about, and we want them to be out and about at our church. We're going to have inflatables set up. We're going to have games set up. uh, We're going to have the gospel be the priority of what is going on here at our church. So I invite you to come, invite your friends, invite your family, uh, so we can talk about Jesus and how much he loves them and cares for them, a way to reach our community. If you have any more questions about what's going on in the bulletin, please feel free to grab one of our staff members and ask um, or call the office, any of those things. But now I invite you to stand with me in honor of reading the word of the Lord from Psalm 66. The word of the Lord says this, Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to your name. They sing praises to your name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for this morning and for this truth that we find in Scripture, that all the earth sings praises to your name. And God, this church, this body of believers gets to be one of those voices. God, we get to be part of your creation. Uh, that gets to sing praise to you, that gets to bow down and worship you. And so, God, I pray that would be on our hearts this morning. God, that we would turn our attention to you. We would focus on your glory, your majesty, God, the way that you have redeemed us, the way that you have saved us. God, you would be glorified in this place today. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and remain standing as we sing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes. Day dawning. 
Go ahead and give me this. There you go. Good morning. I am uh, radioactive. That's the reason why that just went off. I just wanted to let you all know that. Anyway, appreciate you being here today. I know that we have some guests with us, and uh, if you are visiting with us for the first time, we ask that uh, you take the guest registration card that is in the bulletin. You can tear it out. And uh, please fill it out and uh, put it in the offering plate when the offering is passed so that we might have a record of your visit. And we're grateful that you've chosen to be with us. If you're visiting with us with uh, family today, uh, we have some that come in and they're on the lake and they want to worship God on Sunday mornings. And if that happens to be your situation, thank you for being here with us. And if you're visiting from the community seeking a church home, uh, we certainly are uh, Excited that you are here today with us. Let me share with you uh, just a couple of, uh, Daniel and I, we try to tag team the announcements so Thomas won't get mad at us if we go, uh, if we step on one another. So I'm supposed to tell you about the, uh, let's see, Young at Heart. Uh, they are having their luncheon uh, Tuesday, October the 19th, okay? And let's see, is that coming up this coming Tuesday? Okay, just wanted to see if you knew. I didn't know, but I wanted to make sure you knew. Uh, the week after that, though, October the 26th, we are going to the Ruby Rose Cafe in Blue Jacket. How many of you have ever been to Blue Jacket, Oklahoma? Let me see your hand. Some of you have not lived until you've been to Blue Jacket, Oklahoma. And if you don't know where Blue Jacket is, I'll tell you later. I actually do know where it's at. I've been there. I've eaten there. And uh, this particular restaurant is uh, new from the standpoint that uh, I think it's been uh, revamped or whatever. But we will go as a group. We will leave at 430, sign up out in the event table, and we would love to have you be a part of that, okay? Let me share with you some announcements this morning, or excuse me, some uh, prayer requests this morning. Uh, what you have on your prayer list, we always try to provide a prayer list for you in our uh, worship service, but I do have some additions that I just want to make mention this morning. One of our church members, Beverly Double D, is in um, Columbia, Missouri at a hospital there. Uh, she was in Mercy in Joplin. Uh, they did some type of a scope, and uh, her liver was damaged in some way. We're not exactly sure of all the information. Uh, but she has been there since uh, Thursday, I believe, Wednesday or Thursday. And I tried to call this morning and get a, an update on her, but I do not have the latest information on Beverly. But please remember her in prayer. Michael uh, has been going up in Austin uh, to uh, try to be with her. And so the, just the fact that she's away uh, from us here uh, I'm sure is troubling. Uh, when you have to go to a hospital, that was the closest one they could, they could t 
take her to. Uh, so remember her today. Also, Brenda Bridges had surgery last week. She is home. We praise the Lord for that and recovering. Uh, you continue to pray for Brenda uh, as she recovers from her surgery. And then uh, Ginger Tully, we've been asked to remember Ginger. Uh, she's having some health issues. She goes back for some tests, and there is some concern. There possible cancer. Not sure exactly what yet, but uh, pray for uh, Jim and Ginger Tully uh, this morning. The others that are on our prayer list, we've been asked to remember uh, Sapphire Coster, who is a, a young lady, and I believe uh, she has two children, uh, has been having some uh, health issues and uh, trying to be moving from this community to another community. Pray that she was ask, asking for prayer. Also, um, uh, Jimmy Hurd uh, was supposed to be going back to Alabama with his work. Uh, he has developed COVID. Let's remember him today. But let's remember Ray Henry, and also he had a nephew who was shot in Wichita, Kansas, in a road rage incident. He was a trucker, and uh, someone fired seven uh, rounds into his truck. He was hit in the stomach area. They had to remove part of his small intestine. Uh, he is recovering, but folks, we need to remember that situation and pray for uh, his nephew. Uh, Denise Smith is headed to um, uh, Amarillo, Texas, and she will be having a stress test and also will be having a heart procedure, a cataract. She's just going to get it all done while she's there in Amarillo. Uh, so we want to pray for Denise today and pray that everything would go well. We want to remember the uh, family of Sue Bowen, Leah Tyner, and family. They had an, her niece had severed arm, uh, severe arm sur uh, injury, and uh, so we want to remember that family today as well. Also, uh, one of our church members, uh, Tiffany Wilson, has been in Grove uh, Integris Hospital. She was serious for a period of time, but she is doing better. We got an update on her, but let's remember Tiffany uh, this morning in our prayers. Others that we've been praying for, uh, Alan Bruns, Mark Clark. Good to see Mark and his family with us here today. Uh, we want to remember the brother of Tonette Prather, uh, Angelito Carino, uh, who uh, had a stroke. Uh, also, Roger Glenn, Gene Grounds, Tina Henry. Let's pray for these. Uh, Larry Moore today, he had a heart procedure a couple of weeks ago, and he's actually preaching today at Eastside in Miami, and we certainly want to remember him. Um, Max Wallace is doing rehab in Kaiser Rehab, just which is right there at uh, Hillcrest Hospital in Tulsa. He is doing better from his uh, very major uh, back surgery, so remember him today if you would uh, in your prayers. Also, Charlene Pritchard today, uh, Sidney Shaw and others uh, there on our prayer list. Um, we can always, always remember uh, Sandy Lemons, Continue to pray for her and uh, others there that are on our prayer list. So let's pray for these. Also, our servicemen, our college students. We have some college students back with us today uh, on break. This has been fall break, and uh, so we want to remember them today. So bow with me as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our Father, we approach you today with humble hearts. Lord, we realize that we are sinful individuals, but because of your grace and your mercy, we are able to approach your throne with boldness because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So Father, today we want to pause, we want to be still and know that you are God. Lord, you have said in your word that you're an ever-present help in time of trouble, and these individuals that we have mentioned on our prayer list need your help. We ask, Father, that you intervene uh, physically, medically, emotionally. Lord, I lift up uh, uh, Robert and Ivy Castleman to you today as well. I just spoke with Ivy a while ago on the phone, and uh, she continues to do better, but uh, we need to be praying for Robert as well. And, Lord, both of them, we just ask, Father, that you continue your healing process in their life. Lord, we pray for others of our church family who have been through extended illnesses who are going back and forth to doctors or treatments, we ask, Father, that you give them everything that they need. And then, Lord, a, a 
and we pray that you would be the, the healer, Jehovah Rapha, to them today. Father, we thank you for this time of year. We thank you for the beauty uh, of uh, this earth, and uh, Lord, it's just uh, fall is such a beautiful time. And uh, Lord, I pray that, uh, thank you for this uh, youth retreat, for these young people that are here today. I pray, Lord, that you have touched their lives and encouraged them and, and, and are teaching them things in their life that will be helpful to them to live the Christian life. Thank you for the sponsors and Brother Daniel and the leaders there that, that helped with that. Lord, uh, our, I pray for our association. We'll be having an annual meeting this coming Tuesday evening at Delaware Baptist Church. Pray for uh, Dr. Scott Hill, who is our director of missions and those who lead in various capacities. Lord, would you continue to bless the churches of the Northeastern Baptist Association. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Again, it is your day. It is the Lord's day. You have told us to rejoice and be glad in it, and we are going to do that today. But we thank you, Lord, by asking this in Jesus' name. I'd like to... Uh Sing for you a uh, new song. Well, it was written last year, which I guess by today's standards makes it a golden oldie. Uh, but uh, anyway, the ink's still fairly wet, so I think it's uh, still considered a new song. But it's based on uh, Psalm 150. And I'd like to read that for you. Uh, in Psalm 150, it says, "Praise the Lord." That's a great way to start a psalm. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you're breathing this morning, guess what? <laughs> praise the Lord. Hope you enjoy this. You made the starry host, you trace the mountain peaks, you paint the evening stars with wonder. To know it is your throne from desert to the sea, all nature testifies your splendor. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Sing his greatness, all creation. Praise the Lord, raise your voice, you heights and all you depths. From furthest east to west, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You reached into the dust, in love your spirit breathed. You formed us in your very likeness to know your wondrous works. To tell your mighty deeds, to join the everlasting chorus. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Sing his greatness, all creation. Praise the Lord, raise your voice, you heights and all you depths. From furthest east to west, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let symphonies resound, let drums and choirs ring out. All heaven hear the sound of worship. Let every nation bring its honors to the King. A roar of harmonies eternal. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
darkness, all creation, praise the Lord. Raise your voice, you heights and all you depths, from furthest east to west, you distant burning stars, all creatures near and far, from sky to sea to shore, sing out forevermore. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Falling before. 
the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. continue in our time of worship. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your promises, and Lord, we want to uh, just heed the command of the Psalms, Lord, that everything that has breath needs to praise the Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that even no matter what we go through, we can say, Lord, as believers, that no matter what comes, that it is well with my soul. And Lord, we thank you for uh, just guiding us through this time. Pray for this offering that's given, that, Lord, it would just further your kingdom. We just pray for Brother Jim as he brings your message. And we pray. <laughs>
Amen. Thank you, June. I hope you have your Bibles, and I hope you're as excited as they are leaving. I know some of you would probably rather run out and go with them, but I thank you for staying. We're going to be in John chapter 10 this morning. I invite you to turn in your Bibles to the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. We're going to be looking at verses 7 through 10. Last week we we looked at the first six verses with Jesus being the true shepherd. Today, this message really is a life and death uh, issue as far as the text. You don't always necessarily get that, but here today... It actually mentions it in verse 10, but it reminds me of a man and a woman who had been married for many years, and they never really did get along very well, and when there was a confrontation, you could hear yelling and sometimes some screaming deep into the night, and the old man eventually would say, when I die, I will dig myself up out of the grave, and I'm going to come back and haunt you for the rest of your life. That's what he would say to his wife. Well, uh, the neighbors feared him. Uh, The old man liked the fact that he was feared. And then one evening during one of his rants, he died. After the funeral, her neighbors, uh, they were concerned for her safety. They said, aren't you afraid that he may indeed be able to dig his way out of the grave and haunt you for the rest of your life? The wife said, nope, let him dig. I had him buried upside down, and I know that he won't ask for directions. (laughs) And that was for you ladies who have men that do that. Anyway, not sure how much of a life and death issue that was there, but anyway, we'll get to the text today. John chapter 10, verses 7 through 10, under the title of Jesus is the door to abundant life. Now, last week, Jesus shared with his disciples and with those who were hanging around, and remember, this is in the context of Jesus healing the man that was born blind. He's healed, he put uh, mud on his eyes, told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam, which was the healing pool and sure enough when he did he miraculously was able to see for the first time in his life people around were just absolutely dumbfounded and everything he shows himself or goes to the pharisees the sadducees the religious leaders of the day because a lot of times they would have to confirm those type of things and they clearly at first they thought is this really him then they can figured out it was him It was the man born blind. And, well, how did it happen? And then he began to tell them about Jesus. He didn't know his name, but he told them about the man who told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And, and folks, as you know in the story, we've already covered a lot of that, is the fact that the the religious leaders were not willing to accept who Jesus was. He had already tried to reveal himself to them They were not looking for the type of Messiah, the type of Christ that Jesus was sent here on earth to do. He came to seek and save that which was lost. They were looking for a political ruler. They were looking for a political solution. And so when Jesus comes as a suffering servant, when Jesus comes just as a man who certainly taught with authority, it really wasn't resonating at least with the religious leaders because of their traditions, because they were steep. You know, folks, they were religious on the outside, but they were dead on the inside. And so they were not willing to listen to Jesus. Today we have people who are trying to pursue what is called the American dream. I uh, read this past week, and I want to quote a little bit from an author who said, the American dream is to pursue what is called the good life. This is u- usually means owning your own home, <coughs> having a couple of late model cars in your garage, 
taking nice vacations and retiring to a comfortable life of doing whatever you like. Some of you have chosen to do that retirement part right here in Grove, Oklahoma because of this big old lake around here, okay? Now, the rich and famous who supposedly enjoy this good life are splashed across the pages of magazines, of TV uh, uh, programs, magazines like People Magazine, so that we all can vicariously enter their lives and dream without striking it rich ourselves. But while many Americans who are financially comfortable may have achieved the good life, most of them have missed the abundant life. And folks, that is the life that Jesus is offering here in John chapter 10. In fact, John chapter 10, verse 10, may be one of the most important verses spoken. Now, we're going to look at verses 7, 8, and 9, but verse 10 says, Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now, some people will equate that with, well, he's talking about heaven, and we're going to have to wait till we get to heaven to have that abundant life. But folks, I believe that Jesus wants us to experience that abundant life here on this earth. I believe that he wants us to be an example to those who do not have the abundant life, those who are seeking the good life. And folks, let me tell you something. Young people, middle-aged, older adults, whoever you are here today, the world is going to offer some really good things. I would be foolish to, set, to stand here today and tell you that what the world has to offer is not really that good. It's appealing. It's desirable. A lot of, there are people who are working for it. They're working themselves to death for it. There are those who are looking for the, uh, the popularity and, and fame that comes with uh, this life. But folks, anything that this world has to offer is fleeting. It does not last. You can be in the headlines one day. You can be the most important person in the world. And the next day you can lose it all and be an afterthought. So fame and fortune and all of that is fleeting. It will not get you to the abundant life that Jesus promised to all who would follow him. But what is the abundant life? Well, it is not the prosperity gospel that we hear from time to time from the prosperity preachers that are out there. And we need to understand that that kind of prosperity gospel is just a kind of made-over worldly version of materialism. Folks, I believe that when we follow Christ, we are probably going to have to give up quite a few things in life. We're going to have to give up ourselves. We're going to have to be willing to die to self. We're going to have to be willing to give our lives to Christ. He is going to save us because he has the power to save He's going to transform our lives. He's going to transform our wants and desires. We're not going to be chasing after the world anymore. Now, the, we have to be in the world, but just not be of it. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying some of the, the benefits that the world has to offer. But please make sure that you own whatever it is that you own. Make sure that you own it and that it doesn't own you. There's a difference. Jesus claims to be the door to abundant life. And I want you to look at what he says here. Now, in the first six verses that we looked at last week, Jesus tried to explain through imagery, uh, through metaphors, uh, through figures of speech, he tried to get them to see that he was the true shepherd. They would understand that. In that day and time, they would understand the idea of being a true shepherd. They knew what a shepherd was. They saw uh, flocks of sheep all over the place. Some of them were, uh, may have been farmers as well and had sheep. But they understood that concept, concept because they were in an agricultural situation. And so Jesus uses that analogy in the first six verses to say that he is the true shepherd. But it's clear that they didn't quite grasp what he was saying. So let's begin reading in verse 7. And Jesus continues, okay? So Jesus said to them in verse 7, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. May God bless the reading of his precious word. Let's pray together. Father, would you use this passage? Would you touch our hearts today? Would you teach us? I pray for every individual in this place. I pray, Father, for those who are seeking for answers to the problems in life. Lord, I pray for these young people that are here today who've had this retreat this past weekend. Lord, I pray that you would, uh, maybe you've already spoken to their heart this past weekend, and Lord, I pray you would continue and confirm what you are trying to do in their lives. Help them to see that they are not a... um, an accident that they're just here by chance because of evolution, but they're here because you created them. And Lord, you have a purpose for their life. You have a purpose for every person. You desire that every person would come to a saving knowledge of Christ. Although not everyone will accept you, I pray that those who will hear your voice through the power of your Holy Spirit today will hear and accept your offer and gift of salvation. Lord, it is a gift. We can't earn it. We can't be good enough. But we can repent of our sins and we can trust in you and Lord, you can save us. So Father, that is our desire, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. As we look at this passage of Scripture, let me share with you a couple of, uh, two or three observations. First of all, point number one, the description of the door here that is mentioned. Jesus mentions in the passage that he is the door, okay? And here you have this truly, truly statement. Folks, anytime you see that, God is trying to get your attention. Truly, truly, it's actually the word that we get our word amen. It's amen, amen. Take a listen. I'm getting ready to say something very very important. Although everything that Jesus said was important, he wanted them to closely observe what he was about to say. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. This is one of the seven I am sayings in John's gospel to prove that Jesus was not only fully man, but that he was also fully God. He is the God-man. He's already told them in the first six verses that he is the true shepherd. And now he expands on that, although they are a little confused, and he remains the true shepherd, but he now tells them that he is the door of the sheep. What is he saying here? Well, the pens in those days, the sheep pens, they did not have gates or doors. They would build whatever it was that they were using. Sometimes they would use natural crevices in the rock, and sometimes they would build up something that uh, would provide uh, uh, safety for uh, the sheep. They would put them in. Now, if you remember last week, we talked about the gatekeeper, and sometimes they would have a community sheep pen, and so they would, uh, the different shepherds would pay the gatekeeper and the gatekeeper would make sure that the sheep were cared for through the night. And so they could go and rest, the shepherds could, and he would be the one that would lay himself across the door to the entrance of this pen. But now we have the, the, the imagery here is when they would go out for uh, summer grazing. They would go outside of town. And so at night, the, the shepherds would stay with their sheep, okay? They wouldn't have the gatekeeper. And so the shepherd is taking care of his own flock. And folks, you need to understand, the shepherd has invested him his whole self in this flock of sheep. It is his livelihood. Uh, it provides for him and his family. So he's not going to just let his sheep wander off. He's not going to let uh, uh, wolves and, and coyotes or whatever it may be that were going after those sheep that would like to have them. And so he would do everything he could to protect them. And so at night, he would bring them into whatever corral or whatever it is that he had made for them, 
And folks, he would be the door. He would literally lay across the entrance of the pen. And so Jesus, what he was saying here, he said, I am the door to the sheep. I am the only entrance in to the sheep pen. Uh, folks, uh, there are others who try to go come in other ways, but he is the only one. And Acts 4.12 tells us, and, and folks, what he's trying to do, he's trying to give us a spiritual principle here. He's not trying to give you a lesson on sheep herding. He's trying to use something to get their attention, and we need to uh, grab the attention of it today here. In Acts 4.12, it says, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. That is the gospel. Jesus Christ lived the perfect life. My friend, he is the true shepherd, and he is the door to the sheep. Now, Jesus mentions here, in verse 8, that those who are resistant, that there are those who are resistant to the true shepherd. There are those who are thieves and robbers who came before Christ. Now, he's not talking about the true prophets and John the Baptist and others who came before him. He's talking about those who sought to deceive the people. Remember, I uh, read a passage of Scripture uh, from Jeremiah last week. I want to repeat it again in Jeremiah 23, verses 1 and 2. Woe to the shepherds! who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the shepherds who are tending my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them, the way, driven them away and have not attended to them. Behold, I'm about to attend to you for the evil of your deeds, declares the Lord. They were doing the exact opposite. These shepherds, these ones, these leaders, these religious leaders who were coming after Jesus. They would not accept who Jesus was. And folks, they were, really didn't care for the people. As I shared with you last week, they were even making life more burdensome for the people. They were adding to the laws. Folks, let me tell you something. Religion in and of itself does not say. Only Christianity. Only Jesus Christ. Please understand what I... Religion is man-made. It's man trying to go up to God. But Christianity is God coming down to man through the person of Jesus Christ. And that, my friend, is the gospel. Now, the deceivers have always tried to add to it or take away. Satan, from the very beginning in the garden, uh, you know, talking to Eve there in the garden, he, he misquoted Scripture. He didn't tell the truth. He always tries to twist the truth. Listen, folks, that's what Satan is still doing today. He tries to twist the truth. He tries to get you and I to settle for something that is less than the truth. And let me tell you something. There's enough out there today... There's enough philosophy out there today. There's enough, quote, unquote, your truth and my truth. I heard someone recently say, well, you know, now you've got your truth and you need to make sure you speak your truth. Folks, I don't own the truth. You don't either. God does. And it is manifested through a person by the name of Jesus Christ. Do you remember what he said one day? I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He didn't say a truth. He said the truth. So, the deceivers will always be out there. They'll always use sums of money or works perform or rituals to replace devotion to God. Folks, true worship is you and I giving of ourselves to the Lord. We're coming here today. We're not concerned about, about what people think. We're here to worship the one and true God. I pray that when you leave this place, you will have done so. Because see, it's not really up to Brother Matt and the worship team. Yeah, they're supposed to do their part to facilitate worship. I'm going to do my best to try to preach the Word of God. But folks, when it comes right down to it, it's between you and the Lord as to whether you worship or not. Some of us come into a worship service like this, we're not prepared. You didn't talk to God all, at all this past week. 
You didn't mention him in your prayers or you didn't have any prayers. You didn't mention him or ask him for things in your life to help you in guidance or leading, or leading in some aspect. Folks, how, uh, how are you going to suddenly turn it on today and start worshiping him? You see, he needs your whole heart. Jesus is the door. And he reminds his listeners of an abundance in verse 9 with a relationship with Christ. He is our salvation. He is our security and our satisfaction. But that is the description of the door. I want you to notice the second thing. The protection in the door. Who is the door? Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door to the sheep. And again, I shared with you about last week in reference to uh, the shepherd and what he did. Uh, he would literally lie here in the opening of this enclosure. He became the door. He would keep the wild beasts from coming in, and he would keep also the restless sheep. By the way, you need to understand something. We are the ones that are the sheep. We're simple. We're dumb sometimes. I know you don't like to hear that. And we have a tendency to wonder. Wander, not wonder. Wander. Prone to wander, lest I feel it in one of our songs that we sing. Listen, the Bible teaches that. In fact, I believe in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25, listen to what Scripture says. For you were continually straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd, shepherd and guardian of your soul. We, like sheep, have strayed. So there is that wandering aspect that we wander off. But listen, Jesus, if he'll go get the, the one out of the 99, the Bible teaches us, he's interested in you. If you are one of his sheep, he's interested in you. And there is an enemy out there, and we know his name is Satan. Scripture reminds us of his intention. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. I saw this past week a picture. It wasn't very pretty. But it was talking about a, it, it was a situation obviously that happened over in, somewhere in Africa somewhere. I didn't ever get all the particulars. But I saw the, some pictures. And it was of this baby monkey that had hung on to its mother so tightly and hanging on, so you know, the, the protection there, you know, not straying from its mother. And, but the problem was is that the mother had become food for a lion. And as the lion is devouring its mother, here's this child uh, monkey still holding on to its mother. Unfortunately, eventually it became a snack for one of the other lions. But what you saw there was a devotion that that child, that, uh, that monkey was willing to hang on to its security. Oh, if we could be like that today uh, when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, the protection that he offers. Because folks, let me tell you something. Satan prowls around like a roaring lion. He wants to devour you. Young people, he wants to ruin your life with poor choices. Adults, he wants us to uh, hold on to the good life and not embrace the abundant life that he has to offer. Verse 10 speaks of the thief. Look at verse 10. It's, it, it's probably one of the most important verses here in, in the Gospel of John. Uh, it says, um, well, in verse 9 it says, I am the door again. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. It's interesting that Jesus uses the term saved. I kind of like it. I think we ought to use it. You want to be saved? Trust in Christ. The idea of saved is to be rescued from danger. And listen, folks, if you're without Christ today, you are in danger. You are in danger of, a spend, of spending eternity in hell forever. That's what the Bible says. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to scare you down the aisle today. I just want you to understand 
what the Bible says to be truth. You either accept the truth that Jesus is the door today and it's only through him there is salvation or you'll go another way or you'll listen to the others who are not the true shepherds, who are the thieves and the liars and my friend, you'll find yourself on the outside looking in. You see in verse 10, it speaks of the thief. It didn't say a thief. Notice what verse 10 does say. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. You see, sheep are simple animals. And when they are led astray, they can be killed or destroyed. We need to understand that Satan's desire today is to deceive and hinder people from hearing the voice of God. Jesus seeks to save that which is lost. He even said so in coming to earth and being the God-man. Listen to what Luke says. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That was his purpose as he came here to this earth. Isaiah reminds us that we are like sheep that has gone astray. Jesus is the true shepherd. He is the door to salvation. He is the one that you can trust today and to be saved. Don't continue to be deceived by the thief who desires. Listen, my friend, I'm going to tell you something. Satan has a lot of things to offer you today that looks very pleasing and alluring. But in the end, death. Death. And folks, death in the terms in Scripture means separation from God in, in key passages. It's one thing to die. It's another thing to die in your sins. One of the first illustrations that I ever used as a preacher boy when I was in college at NEO was the story about the, uh, the little boy who lived in the neighborhood by the church there, and he had, a, he had a liking for birds. He wanted to catch birds, and so he came up with the old trap, uh, a box with a stick with string, and he would put the, uh, the food in it to try to entice the birds, and sure enough, he was able to do it after several tries. He was able to get him several little sparrows that were in uh, the little box. He put a cage top on it, and he began to walk down the street. And He just happened to walk by the church, and the pastor was outside tending the yard a little bit there, and he saw him. And so he went over and decided to engage conversation with him. He said, what do you got there? And he said, well, I've got me some birds. And so he looked inside, and sure enough, there's about three or four birds. He said, well, that's pretty cool. How'd you do that? And so he began to describe how he'd used his trap and used the food and everything to trap the birds. He said, well, what are you going to do with them now that you've trapped them and that you've got them? He said, oh, I'm going to play with them for a little while. I guess when I get tired of them, I'm just going to kill them. The pastor said, oh, said, uh, tell you what, how about if I give you $10? For those birds. Well, that little, those little, little boy's eyes just lit up and said, ten dollars. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the birds. I'll even throw in the trap for you. He gave him the box and the birds and everything, took his ten dollars and went merrily on his way. The pastor went out to the back of the church, got the box. There was the trap door that was in on the top. He gently lifted it up, and the birds left, flew away. You say, what does that have to do with anything? Folks, Satan is like a lot like that little boy. He likes to trap. He likes to play with people. But in the end, he wants to kill us. He wants to destroy us. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But you see, Jesus is like the, little, the pastor he purchased the price for you and me. He went to the cross. And folks, not only did he purchase that price for us, but now he has set us free. And we are free to live for him. We are free to live apart from sin. We don't have to be chained to our past. We don't have to be chained to what's going on in our, our life or our world. Just because someone says we're no good, listen, God thinks you're pretty good because he sent his son to die for you. And by the way, God doesn't make 
no junk. You're special. He loves you today. Well, one final thing. That's the protection that's in the door. Jesus Christ being that door, he offers. In fact, I didn't probably say enough, but in verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Folks, that speaks of a loving shepherd who allows his children, his sheep, to do uh, things in life. Yes, they can come in and out, and they can find pasture. They can find everything that they need in life. That is the protection. That is the provision that God gives. And then one final thing. Look at the declaration uh, concerning the door. Verse 10, the last part of verse 10, one of the greatest declarations in Scripture when Jesus says there in verse 10, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Folks, that is a great declaration about Jesus being the door. In contrast to the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Jesus is the door to salvation. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. There are only two ways to live your life. You can pursue this world for satisfaction, or you can seek after God to satisfy the longing in your soul. The world, under the dominion of Satan, will rob, kill, and destroy your soul. But Jesus offers life, and more abundant life than you could ever imagine. I close with this story. The Eskimos have an interesting way up in uh, Alaska and other places. They have an interesting way of killing wolves. They take a sharp knife, dip it in seal fat. They let it freeze. And then they plant the blade with the blade showing in the ice. And so when a hungry wolf, he smells that seal fat, and he will come up to the knife and begin to lick it. Well, at first, all they're getting is seal fat, and that's pretty good. But then all of a sudden, they get on that knife, and the knife cuts the tongue of the wolf and as soon as he licks it he begins to taste blood the problem is that it's his own blood but he loves the taste of blood so much that he continues to lick more and more until he finally kills himself what he first thought was living and enjoying something ended up killing him folks gorging yourself on the world today And its sinful pleasures is like that. At first it tastes good, but it's really destroying you. Only Jesus can ultimately satisfy your soul. Only Jesus can reconcile you to a holy God because you see, you and I are sinful men, women, boys, and girls. He will give you real life. The abundant life that begins throughout and through all eternity. So, folks, Jesus is the door. He's the door into the sheep. He's the door to abundant life. Are you willing this morning to admit that you are a sinner and that your sin is the reason that Jesus came to this earth to be the true shepherd and to be the suffering servant, to die on the cross for your sins and mine? Only through him can you be saved. Folks, really, the choice is between life and death. With the world, leads ultimately to death. But with Jesus Christ, abundant and eternal life. Are you willing to respond and accept that today? I want us to bow our heads in a word of prayer for just a moment. Brother Matt is going to lead us in a hymn of invitation. My friend, I do not know your situation today. God does. He knows everything about you. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he knows whether you are a child of God or not. He knows whether you are faking it today. He knows whether you are just religious 
or you are a true follower of Christ. My friend, I'm going to encourage you to quit playing games with God. I'm going to encourage you today to quit having one foot in the world and having one foot in the church. Living like the world six days a week and coming into God's house on the seventh day hoping that he will forget how you've lived the past six days. My friend, it's time to get serious. We're living in the last days. Jesus is coming back. This world is getting more and more tense, more and more troublesome. There are a lot of people today who are living by fear because they are not living by faith. If you have a faith relationship in Jesus Christ, perfect love cast out fear. You shouldn't be fearful today. If you were to die, before the end of this day, do you know for certain that you would be with Jesus in heaven? Or would you be eternally separated from him? My friend, that's the question. What is the answer? If the answer is not yes, then my friend, I want to challenge you to think seriously about where you are today and where you're going to spend eternity. I know that this, that Satan wants to do everything he can to keep you from hearing the message. He's going to try to get you, talk you out of it today. He's going to try to talk you out of it tomorrow. He's going to try to get you to think about anything else other than God's truth, his word, this sermon. I'm encouraging you today. Think on the things of God. Maybe he's already convicted you. Maybe he's already, you've got that uneasiness in your heart and you know that you need to come to Christ. I invite you to come. There's an altar here. We have people that can show you how to be saved. Maybe this morning you say, Brother Jim, I'm a Christian. But I'm not living the way I should. I'm not living according to an obedient lifestyle with Christ. I'm just kind of just kind of floating, just trying to get by. My friend, give it your all. You are one of God's children. You have been saved by the blood of Christ. You are a believer and you need to act like it. Start living for him today. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, as we have this invitation, Lord, there's an altar here. I pray that people will come to this altar. Lord, there's people here today that are in bondage to sin and their sinful past. Maybe something that they've done in their past that they feel like they could never be forgiven for. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you t died for our sins, every one of them. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Help people here today to see that you are a loving Father who was willing to give up your Son. That's how much you love us. Now help us to live for you. Lord, help us to come through the door. Jesus, you are the door to salvation. We accept you today. Thank you, Lord. Help people to come, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? As we, Brother Matt leads us, as we sing, you come on. If you need to make a decision, come on. If you need to come and pray, here's an altar. Whatever it is, you come as we sing. Come behold the wondrous mystery.
as we will be when he comes. Amen. Folks, that, that song gives you the gospel. He came the first time as a suffering servant, but he comes the next time. Righteous, holy, and folks, he's coming in power. Are you ready for Jesus Christ to come back? Amen. Let's give him a hand that he will come back. Now, listen, I want him to come back, but if I want him to come back, that means some people are going to miss out. So if you're one of those, please don't leave this place today without talking to somebody. Make sure before you leave, I believe that the Bible teaches a no-so salvation. You can know that you know that you know. Amen. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Brother Matt, close us with it. Remember, discipleship first tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll continue with our study. So do that as Brother Matt leads us out. As we go, man.